Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana, baby, right here in Namibia. Where I am, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but I definitely know that she knows where we are. Where are we now? Ochiwarongo. Do you know her? Like, seriously, I can't believe that I'm meeting you. Oh, okay. If you're talking about <laughs> the pioneers between moving to Africa. <laughs> I think you are you are the one who started it. Oh, thank you. Oh, it, oh no. <laughs> don't act as if you don't know because I used to watch you six years ago way back in China. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was looking for Africans from, I mean, born in America, moving back to the continent. Mm -hmm. And you are the only person that I found on the internet. Wow. And then I think after four years, I also found um, the traveling sister mm -hmm. in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many years now? Um, I've been in Namibia since December of 2010, so... 12 years yeah. in Africa. Mm -hmm. So I guess now you're a Namibian. Uh, just about, yeah. You know, I married a Namibian, you know, I've, I've birthed Namibians. Hey, so. Namibian. <laughs> yeah. I really wanted to know what brought you to Africa in the first place. Right. I wanted to experience life on the, on the continent of my ancestors. Literally, mm. that's what um, brought me here. Uh, before I moved to Namibia, I um, spent some time living in Barbados okay. in the Caribbean, which is where my mother's side is, of the family is from. Okay. Um, and after I came back from Barbados, like I still had the travel bug. Um, and so the next step up, obviously, from the Caribbean was the motherland. Uh, and so that's why I, I basically came here. I just have always felt a strong connection with my ancestors and always had this travel bug instinct in me. And, and that's how I ended up here, basically. You're born in America? Yes. Which I'm part of America? New York. New, New, York, York. New York City, actually, is New where York I was City. born. Yeah. Why would you leave New York City and come to... <laughs> even, she's not even staying in the capital city. Right. Because the first time that I saw you were in the north. Yeah, yeah. When I first moved here, I lived in northern Namibia, close to the border of Namibia and Angola, mm. um, which I understand you will be visiting soon. You'll see it's drastically different than even here, and definitely different than the capital city. Um, and then, so I've lived in the north, uh, and then I've also lived in the capital city, which okay. is Vintuk, and now I, I live in Ochi, Ochibarongo, um, which is about two and a half hours north of, of Vintuk. But I, I, I love your village videos, though. Mm -hmm. Your morning routine <laughs> yeah. in the village. You see, like, I used to watch you way back. So mm -hmm. let me know. You've been living here for 12 good years. Mm -hmm. How is life in here? Uh, you know, it's um, when I first moved here, I, I was on a high you know, uh, of, of just, you know, being in another country. But the truth is, I think no matter how excited you are to live abroad, mm. at some point, just, you know, just the, the realities and the ups and downs of living in another country on another continent set in. Um, and that's just the reality of, of living, you know, on, in another country. You know, it's not all always easy. You know, it, it's constant cultural adjustment. Uh, from, you know, just especially coming from New York City and living here, you know, there's a big difference, obviously. Uh, so in general, how is life, though? You know, life is is up and down, you know, so I go through highs um, and I go through lows, you know, it's just it can be challenging, especially um, raising kids, you know, in a completely different society um, where just there isn't as much available, for example, like in my town, um, you know, and so I had to really adjust my expectations of like what motherhood would be like, uh, for example, you know, like there aren't many playgrounds, for example, you know, in my town, that's just something simple um, that I would like to have my son, you know, take my son and two or whatever. So, um, but overall, I would say life in Namibia has been um, just like a beautiful surprise. You know, I never, as a child, at least it, thought that I would be living in Africa. I'm the first person in my family to do this. Um, and so, although it comes with challenges, uh, it's an opportunity that I, I really have to try not to take for granted um, because so many African Americans don't have this experience. And so even in my most challenging moments, I am thankful, I am grateful um, for this opportunity. Um, and it's, it's always a learning experience, you know, constantly. And so, so I would say, yeah, it's a learning experience. It's brought me, um, you know, a whole Namibian family, 
you know, my, my, my kids are, are, are Namibian, you know, African-Americans, whatever you want to, I call them diaspora babies <laughs> or whatever, because no, they're mixed it's... with so much, you know, like, they're, yeah. They but... don't know that you actually married a Namibian. So yeah, exactly. Like I didn't marry a Namibian. Continental African and African in a diaspora. Yeah, combining together. exactly. So know, maybe it's going to be a continental diaspora baby. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, but I, I just, I just want to know, yeah, mm -hmm. before coming to Namibia, mm -hmm. you ever had any perception about a continent Africa that, mm -hmm. like, kept on holding you back that, right. hey, Africa, I don't think I will ever step my foot there. I mean, mm -hmm. you ever had any perception about a continent before moving here? For the most part, no, um, because I spent, because my mother's side of the family is from Barbados, okay. a predominantly black country. Um, in the Caribbean. And I had spent time visiting Barbados growing up and then I even lived there for like a year, a year and a half. Uh, I had experience and exposure and understood that there's more to life than just America and um, black countries can function and it's not that negative stereotype of like chaos and like poverty, you know, like, um, I mean, of course there is poverty here, but because of my experience and experiences and, and um, ancestry in Barbados, I, I didn't come with many of those stereotypes, um, but I know that I, I have met many Americans that because they didn't have the, the experience um, and the heritage that I have come mm. to Namibia with those kinds of negative um, perceptions mm. and get their, you know, their whole mind blown when they come and it's and it's the way it is, you know. So for me, um, for the most part, no, you know, I, I was very prepared just based off of my experiences in the Caribbean. Do you regret yeah. moving to Namibia? Definitely not. No, 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 no. <laughs> is it always easy? No. But do I regret it? No. This is like I, like I was saying, I'm the only person that I know of on both sides of my family um, to live on the African continent, you know, and I mean, I'm sure you've kind of heard the conversation, but I, I'm well aware of how many African Americans want to experience life and would love to move to Africa. Mm. And so it's, it's a blessing, you know, and um, I feel like my ancestors led me here and that's not something that i take for granted I, I mean there's so many of my ancestors the ones that were taken from like west africa that would have loved to come back to africa and never got that chance how could i regret moving here when i had that opportunity you know which means you have a message for your fellow brothers and sisters who are looking forward to move to the continent or even visit if you have a message for them what would that message be ah uh, my message would be don't let the um negative stereotypes uh, prevent you from coming here. Um, don't let negative conversations about things like diaspora wars. <laughs> I don't know if you hear about those, you know, just these, these like contentious conversations and debate on the internet between like Africans and African Americans and Brit Britain, Black Britons and uh, West Indians in the Caribbean. Like don't fall hype to that sort of negative energy those conversations are you can have those conversations can be had but there's a lot of negativity attached to those conversations and you'll see people say things like oh like africans don't want us there that's not true you know um and so don't fall victim to a lot of this internet conversation come and see for yourself talk to people for yourself you know because there are a gazillion people on the african continent and so you can't generalize them all based off of what people are saying, um, you know, people are arguing about on the internet, you know, and, and so that's that's really my advice. Just but I think come. I've also been hearing um, this whole stereotypes that Africans don't like African-Americans, mm -hmm. I mean, vice versa. Yeah. But you've been here. You've experienced the real Africa. Yeah. People in here, how do they treat you? Right. Um, you know, for the most part, I'm welcomed, you know, let's be real. I'm I'm not for everyone. Not not everyone is going to like me. Exactly. That's that's a fact, and that's not true. exclusive to Namibia. Mm. You know, that's that's something that uh, can ha that 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 I experience in America. You know, so um, but for the most part, I've been really welcomed warmly. My mother-in-law, um, her English is not great, and yet we have an amazing bond. She is a phenomenal woman. You know, and and even though I'm so, I've grew up so vastly different. Um, she treats me, you know, she's just, she's, she's amazing. Mm. Um, my, my husband's uh, grand, late grandfather who passed away when he was 101, I found out we even have the same birthday. Um, mm. And I met him and he was blind and didn't speak hardly any English, 
was so always considerate and conscientious of me. Um, this, you know, he, he, this is someone in the north, in the village, you know, and we are obviously completely different, you know. Um, and so, uh, and then even like people recognize me from my YouTube channel, Namibians, all the time. Um, and they're always like just coming up to me and introducing themselves. Really, really nice people, you know. Um, so for the most part, I've been, you know, really welcomed and thank you, Namibia, you know, really well, honestly. <laughs> thank you, Namibia, for yeah. welcoming our sister from yeah. the diaspora. But no, no, I mean, I always say you're just an African born in America. That's right. Thank so you. Welcome back to the motherland. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> but I want to know. We're why? probably cousins, honestly. Uh, exactly. Coming from Ghana. From Ghana. Yeah, exactly. You have to have you ever been to Ghana though? No, but I want to. I yeah, I would like you to Ghana. Definitely. When do you want to come? Uh, as soon as COVID is passed. <laughs> no. I want to buy you a ticket to Ghana. Okay. Runway ticket. Are you serious? No. You I must, mean, you must be balling. No, hands down. I want to buy you a runway ticket. Okay. You have no idea <laughs> like how I cherish you. I cherish you wow, so much. Thank you. Like, no, like to be honest, like I was, I was watching you way back in China. Okay. And I'm like, when will I get a chance to meet you? Because I feel like you started a whole revolution that Thank you. people are not even giving you the credit. Thank you. I that Coming from you, like I, I told him earlier, coming from him, that means a lot because he's doing the damn thing. No. I, no Trailblazing. No, listen, listen, the I, pioneer. For me, for me, I'm just a messenger. <laughs> but for her, she started it. She started it. Like, yo, you, you all should give her the credit. Thank I mean, you. can we all give her a round of applause in Thank the you. comment section? Thank you. Thank and, you. And um, let us know why you started your YouTube channel in the first place. Yeah, I started my YouTube channel because, like you, I was as I was preparing to move here, mm -hmm. I started Googling and researching, um, pers like, what is life in Namibia like? What is life in Africa like? But specifically for a black foreigner. And I wasn't finding that information. All of the content was from white uh, foreigners exactly. you know that was and that was the thing yeah all of the the, the the blogs and there wasn't that much in terms of youtubers back mm. then in 2010 but all of the content was from white foreigners which I found incredibly frustrating because I knew that their experience in Africa would be vastly different from mine as someone of African descent you know um, and so I started to just chronicle my experience right before I moved here and then right and then when I got here um, and I just started you know just blogging and sharing my experience and uh, wanting to fill that gap, mm. that void. Um, and so when uh, it, it just started to take off, people found it, you know, really interesting, particularly black people obviously found it interesting. And then I started um, from YouTubing my own experiences. I started connecting with other African-Americans that were living on the continent mm. and I'd started interviewing them. Um, and that's I also have my website. And so I started publishing interviews with other African-Americans that were living around the continent so that I could provide a much more, you know, well-rounded perspective, not just Namibia. Um, but also what is it like for others, you know? Uh, and so that's, you know, just trying to fill a void that was direly needed, you know, basically is why I, I started. And you completely vanished. <laughs> it's been a year. Like, I was sending you messages like, I'm coming to Namibia, no response. Mm -hmm. And then I had to look for you. <laughs> Thank so I had you. to contact so many people. And finally, wow. they gave me your contact. Okay. And I'm like, okay, I made it. <laughs> Wherever she is, I need to find her. <laughs> yeah. So why, are you coming back anytime soon? I am. Um... Okay, I have a big announcement. You know what it is. No, I don't know unless you tell me. You you saw no, you no, no, saw no, what I, it is. I, I didn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see anything. I was gonna save it for my channel no, to tell, tell, tell them. Tell them. Tell them. No, you know. you're trying I to exploit know. my situation. I, I, I have no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> well, okay. No, I had. Okay, I just gave birth um, in January, January 25th, to my second child. Wow. Um, yeah, who you guys will meet. I guess on her you channel. Yeah, you'll you know meet, how we do it. It's it's by force, yeah. See, you guys <laughs> it's very need pushy. To go to her YouTube channel <laughs> and go and subscribe. She's the pioneer of Africans in America moving to Africa. Thank no you. one would take that from you. I Thank mean, you. I, wow, I that's really to, nice. I have to pretend that mm -hmm. because we need to let the world know that you are the one. That's really decent. In 2010, I think in 2010, I was not even. I was in Ghana that time. Right. I went to China in 2013, so I discovered you five years ago. Right. And I yeah. can't believe I'm here with you. Thank you. I mean, you've inspired so many people. I, I think I even had a comment from one guy called Veins of Africa. Mm -hmm. He's like, Maya, don't leave Namibia without looking for her. Thank you. Then Thank I you. I have to look for you. <laughs> so I just want to say you're an inspiration. Please Thank let you. me get you a ticket to Ghana, in and out, accommodation. <laughs> if you're serious, on. okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> you really, you really must be balling if you no, can make no, that. No, no. I, I'm, I'm just, I just want to tell you that right. I, I want to do that for you. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm still. <laughs> what? 
I'm not joking. If I don't believe go, it. No, if you want to go to Ghana, just let me know. Okay. Just sign right now. Just Thank get you. A that's, to Ghana. that's really In amazing. Because you know they say they say exactly they say most um, of the slaves uh, that were taken to Barbados mm. came from Ghana. Yeah. You know, and so, so I you swear, just have yeah. to visit Ghana. Definitely. Because I, I feel like Namibia is not. I'm sorry. It's not too Africanized. Oh. Man. That's why I'm trying to go to um, the north. Shots fired. No. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to go to the north to see if I, I'll feel like I'm in Africa because you will, and you will, you will. That's what I'm and and, and you'll understand my husband. You know, you will. Yeah. Let I me mean, tell us how you met your husband, though. Ah, I w the. The school that I so when I first moved here, I came as a volunteer teacher, mm. and he joined the staff about six months after I, I started teaching um, as like a relief teacher, and that's how we met. You know, he was just I, it was it it wasn't like he was Namibian and I was American. It was just very seamless. You know, um, he gets me, I get him. There was really not a cultural adjustment. You know, I don't know. That's what it was like. Maybe ordained by the ancestors. You know, because yeah. it's just. Um, we're very similar. Um, we both studied media and anyway, but he's just a, he's a gentleman, you know, he's an amazing father, um, a very thoughtful person. You know, his, he, his mother just really did a great job. And so we, we hit it off. Yeah. You know, um, they got married in Namibia. I think I watched the video too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think <laughs> you're watching this video on your screen. That's the wedding between her and the husband. Mm -hmm. I just want to um, tell you that You've been amazing. Thank you. Uh, keep on inspiring people. <coughs> Please you. come back soon. Mm -hmm. And um, now you live in Africa. Do you believe that Africa is the future? Oh, definitely. You know, every, I mean, just, uh, they call it the last frontier, you know, but I mean, you can see there's the Chinese and there's, you know, like, um, which is a whole nother conversation. And I mean, everything else is so, not everything else, but um, a lot of people, just want to come here you know the diaspora even africans are in the diaspora are wanting to move back um there's just so much uh opportunity here you know uh the people you know overall just very special and unique um and of course this is in my opinion and what many of these historians say the birthplace of humanity exactly it starts here and it's going to end here you know so <laughs> oh, that's yeah. deep. Yeah. We start here and yeah. it ends here. Mm -hmm. Your final message to everyone watching us and then we'll close Um, up. you know, again, like I'm really big on um uniting on the diaspora, the African diaspora uniting. Pushing aside all of those um like I said, diaspora wars and, and different uh parts of the of the diaspora bickering. You know, I'm not into that. That's not my thing. And that's why um of course, I would uh, do an interview with him. Um, and, and that's why I started YouTubing to unite the, the diaspora, not just for African-Americans, but just to teach us about each other or give us a platform for us to get to know each other. Um, and so that's my biggest message is that we have so much, obviously you see there's a lot of challenges that um, people of African descent face around the planet, around the globe, but united, we have so much power. You know, and I think this is an example. Uh, and so that's my message is that we really need to unite and stop, you know, just try, try to avoid the bickering. We can learn about each other. We can iron out those differences in a, in a sensitive, um, caring, understanding way, you know. Uh, and so, so that's my message is just us uniting so that we can start to um, really overcome and, and help each other out around the world. You've yeah. been in Africa for so long. So definitely I know that if I give you the chance to change one thing in Africa, what will you change? There's this issue of corruption, and it's not unique to Africa. It's not unique to African countries. Mm. But what I see happening is it's, it's uh, leaving the majority and the masses out of, out of fulfilling themselves and their, their potential because resources are being squandered by, you know, a wealthy elite. You know, and that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, that's not unique to Africa, but I just um, can see a lot of potential being squandered and a lot of people, a lot of Africans being left behind. Um, the people that need the most are being forgotten and left behind um, in the, for the interests of the wealth of a wealthy elite, you know, and that to me is disappointing because I did come here um, with, with this perception of like Africans, uh, black people looking out for each other, you know, and with a lot of corruption comes a lot of, a lot of black people just looking out for themselves and not for, you know, th those back home or whoever. Um, so that's something I would change. That's something I would change.
I want to say thank you so much for talking to me. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so Keep much. Keep up the good work. Thank I you. I would give you a hug, but you ah, know. No. <laughs> we can't. We can't do that. No, not now. Yeah. <laughs>